Clearly, he's right on point. We need to recognize them, give them the cheers because the Republicans are, are, them, are cheering their, their people on. The Quitman 10, the Quitman 10 over in Brooks County, I don't think they're guilty. But I want you all to know between the 24th and 26th, Gabio, the SCLC, now Operation Push, Jesse Jackson may be over there, Joseph Lowry, all the heavyweights in the civil rights movement will converge on Quitman. Three days, Gabio is having a convention over in Quitman. They're going to bring the forces from Atlanta over in Quitman. I stood on the platform. There's a press conference. You can see it on Boston GBR, on my YouTube. And I'm telling you that it was a very powerful, the Reverend Jesse, I mean, uh, Reverend Lowry, he dropped the bomb. In fact, he said, uh, let me put it in my own words. We think about the Quitman 10, and we think they've done a great wrong over there. I want to tell you, it's not just the, the Quitman 10. It's the Madison 8. It's the Tallahassee 4. This is across the nation to suppress and control the vote. And so if we as a Democratic Party don't get behind these people, if you don't believe they're innocent, get behind our party because we need and they need your support. One other thing. Did you not know that Brooks County got more people registered than Lowndes County? Do you know that we went to Macon? And do you not know this was in May of last year? They only have 800 people that are eligible to vote that are not registered. Just 800. And when we met in Macon, do you not know that they had the support of their community to travel from Brooks County to Macon saying they didn't do anything wrong? Do you not know that I have names of people that said the GBI harassed them, intimidated elderly people to the, to the point that they would not even return to the poll to vote? That's a matter of fact. And I hope it come out in the trial. I'm going to take my seat. But look, the last week in February, I think all of us need to be over in Brooks County. I think we just need to take some ballots over there and register, register application, register people vote. What y'all think? I think we should. But anyway, if you all don't say nothing, I guess you don't agree with me. But it's okay. But if we keep sitting down and don't say nothing, I'm sorry, y'all. We got to do it. We got to do it. No, and not a single individual here can do it all by themselves. We must all work together, uh, bring our friends. Uh, I, I'm, I have to confess that I was slack today. I had a previous uh, appointment that I did earlier in the afternoon. Um, usually I spend the uh, early afternoon before the meeting phoning through my Rolodex, reminding people of the meeting, and I did not do that. And so we see when I slack off, our meeting slacks off. When y'all slack off, the whole thing slacks off. So um, we have to work together. Mr. Quarterman. Howdy. Some of you may be aware I have this petition here protesting the uh, private prison in Lowndes County that the Industrial Authority is proposing. If anybody wants to sign this who hasn't, I have it here. And I just discovered something. Uh, this morning that's kind of disturbing that's related to this. You probably haven't heard about it because it hasn't been in the news unless you read the Lake blog, Lowndes Area Knowledge Exchange. That'd be Lowndes Area Knowledge Exchange. Um, in the Georgia legislature, there's a bill that's already passed the House. I believe it's HB 475. And it uh, basically says that any... Uh, uh, Economic Development Authority in the state, which would include the Aldosta Lowndes County Industrial Authority, can declare any given project to be an appropriate public-private partnership for which they can float bonds that we, the taxpayer, would be on the hook for without ever having to ask an elected official or ever having to go to the people. That's right. With, that's right. An unelected, appointed body can do this if this law passes. You, know, for, you, you may be aware that our local industrial authority floated uh, $15 million in bonds to buy land, but they had to get the Lowndes County government to co-sign that. If this bill passes, they won't have to do that. Now, you know, I don't know that our industrial authority is planning anything like that, but the point is they could. So, for example, for this prison, if they wanted to do it and they needed money to do it, they could just float a bond. If they wanted a biomass plant or a coal plant, 
And that's not completely unrelated because one of the people pushing this bill is a legislature, a legislator from Washington County where the coal plant just got rejected for lack of funding. This would be a way to fund it. So, you know, like I say, I don't know our industrial part authority would be planning anything that would take advantage of this, but the point is it's a bad bill. It can still be stopped in the Senate. I believe it's HB 475. They, they could have just funded it through that. Now, if that's a little different because, you know, Sterling Planet was going to do most of the funding for, funding for that. So I don't know if it really would have affected that case, but there's other things that, you know, they might need money for. They could just float a bond issue. Okay, so, uh, and one last thing. Everybody's going, well, Democrats are not motivated. Well, you know, what I've been hearing is actually the opposite. Republicans, including Republicans right here in this county, I got a report from the a, a recent Republican Party meeting, which I think was held in this very room, that mostly what they talked about was how they didn't like any of the presidential candidates that are running in the Republican primary. We don't like <laughs> That's right. Well, I, I refer to them as the Committee to Re-elect President Obama. And my... My point is twofold. One, I got a taste of this up close and personal at a party I went to recently, which was uh, uh, all Republicans except for me and one other person, um, birthers and truthers and, um, uh, and Agenda 21 people. And what they mostly wanted to talk about, though, was how they didn't think any of the Republican candidates for president represented them. In fact, the biggest birther in the room who went on for like 15 minutes about that as soon as we walked in, later he turns to me and said, it's so bad I'm thinking of voting for Obama. Uh. <laughs> so, you know, you can think of those presidential candidates as the committee to reelect President Obama. I, I, I don't see that it's the Democrats that are unenthusiastic. I think it's the other way around. So I think we should be glad about that. And we can elect people... We can re-elect President Obama. We can elect people to the State House and the Congress, and we can re-elect Sheriff Prime, which I would recommend. Uh, every now and then, I'm. Uh, I'll, I'll get to you. Every now, I had something to say about House bills. Uh, every now and then, I, I pay attention a little bit to what's going on in the legislature. Mostly, I would just want to cover my eyes and my ears and say, "Please go away." Um, but today, I got a telephone call that was. Um, uh, an automaton which said um, we're making phone calls about school choice and a bill in the legislature about school choice and if you're for school choice press one and we'll collect, connect you to your representative Jason Shaw I thought mm, I don't know anything about the school choice bill I best press one so that I can find out about it and when I pressed one I got connected to the voicemail of some other legislator so I hung up because I was not Jason Shaw I might have left him a message um, but the really horrible stuff is uh, moving its way along in our legislature. I highly recommend that you uh, go and uh, speak to your legislature later. Uh, Amy or Tim or Jason or Ellis, they still are our representatives, and it's your responsibility to tell them what you think about school choice or, you know, any other crazy thing they're doing. Now, oh, Sheriff Prime, did you have something you wanted to say to us? Okay, he's, he's going to address us as a citizen, and then we'll come to you, Elliot. Thank you. I, I, I don't mean to take the, the stage here, but I, what I wanted to address is uh, you were talking about the uh, uh, private jail system. Uh, I'd like to voice my opinion of that. Uh, the, the private jail, uh, from our study so far, is the cost of, uh, and I'm going to use a figure of around 800 inmates in our county jail system. Right now, we're right, we're pretty close to 900 in in our jail now, and we figure around maybe $36 a day to feed the inmate, and that's counting the, uh, of course, the food and and uh, our employment. And looking at the private jail sector. Of course, I'm responsible for the inmate whether he is in a private jail or in my jail. If I'm going to be responsible for that inmate, I, I want him here. I want him in my jail, not a private jail. Uh, 
And another thing is the cost factor. Uh, like I said, we're figuring around 46, I mean, I'm sorry, $36 per day. In the private sector, they're figuring around $64 a day. So that's our study, and I just wanted to address that. Uh, and, and I'm certainly, we've tried the, uh, we've tried the private probation office. And, uh, you know, if somebody in the private, uh, probation office, if, uh, we have, uh, an inmate or, or violation of probation, it doesn't take but maybe two or three dollars for them to, to violate the probation and put them back in jail, uh, where we can work with the state a little bit better. Uh, I just wanted to address that and I appreciate your time. My, my number one member generator, Elliot Bergman. Yes, sir. How many members do we have signed up right now? Mm, I don't know the answer to that. I do know that last year we had the maximum number of people pay dues um, of any year that I've been attending here. So uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know the actual number, but I do know that our folder from last year is the fattest folder that we ever had. What are the student Democrats? Well, Ariel is right there at the door. She's our intern. Um, most of our Ariel, come come so they can see you. You're hidden. <laughs> Many of our students are political science students or, in the, they, or they are in the Masters of Public Administration program. That program runs a class on Monday night. Most of them are in class right now. They hold their meetings on uh, Tuesday evenings at 7 o'clock. Um, we've been to a couple of them lately. They have had good um, attendance, and they have elected new officers. Um, so they're supposed to actually be getting us. Uh, I've been corresponding with them for our training on March the 3rd. They're going to get the space for us. We have not. And that would be a good project for somebody to take on, to have a student club at Georgia Military and to have a club at Wiregrass. I would be happy to have somebody who felt that that was something within their scope to take on. That would be great. Anything else? I, I said it last time, and I'll say it again. Elliot was our number one member generator last year. He did a great job. If, if everybody brought the number of members, paying members, donations that, that Elliot did, we would never worry about paying our rent. Thank you. All right, somewhere here I have an agenda. Uh, is there any old or new? Oh, uh, citizen, you want to? You want to? Got something to say, Jim? Come on. Yeah. Okay. And uh, don't get too worried. I'm not sure what I'm going to cover. This is all off the cuff, but I, re I really appreciate the sheriff being here tonight and just showing up like that without being. Uh, I don't know if you're just coming, and I really appreciate you and answering all our questions. <laughs> And because, uh, uh, as I've tried to say a, minute, a number of times, even though I'm really interested in national politics and stuff, I'm much more interested in local stuff because that's where we live and that affects our lives more than anything else. And like Tip O'Neill once said, all politics is local. And uh, but I want to give uh, one of the things I was listening to Bill here, who I really love and appreciate. For all he does, his ideas and everything like that, and I think he's one of the best guys I've ever seen run for an office. So and I really hope you make it soon. <laughs> Let's hear it for him. But I was really interested to hear him say, you know, and one of the issues he brought up that's really dear to me is, who can afford to run? I mean, there you were running for Congress. Just a local district to the House of Representatives in Washington, you said, you had to pay 65000 out of your own pocket, and that doesn't even count 